Now let's do another one. And for this one, it's very similar. It looks a little bit more complicated, but honestly, it works the same way. We want to cancel out this denominator. And again, the first thing we'll do is just see which k value would make the denominator 0. So 3k minus 9, we're saying this can't be 0. So let's add 9 to the other side. And we'll divide each side by 3 so that we know k cannot be 3. So we've eliminated the value of k that would lead to division by 0. And from here, we can just move on and try and solve this equation. And we'll do that by multiplying each side by this denominator. We want to get k out of the denominator. So to do that, put these in parentheses. And we'll multiply each side by 3k minus 9. And on the left-hand side, they're going to cancel out. The 3k minus 9 and the top and the bottom will cancel. And we just get 4k minus 6. And on the other side, we get this 3k minus 9 times 1 third. Well, if we put it over 1, we're just multiplying fractions. And so you get 3k minus 9 up top and 3 in the denominator. Now let's get rid of this fraction as well. We'll multiply everything by 3. And we'll have to distribute that. So we get 12k minus 18 is equal to 3k minus 9, since over here the 3s will cancel each other out. So from here, we're just solving a linear equation. Let's subtract 3k on each side. We get 9k minus 18 is negative 9. We'll add 18 to the other side. We get 9k is 9. And then dividing each side by 9, we get that k is 1. So at this point, you'll want to go back to your original equation, plug in k equals 1, you get 4 minus 6, which is negative 2. You get 3 minus 9, which is negative 6, but negative 2 over negative 6 does simplify to 1 third, which means that 1 is for sure the answer. So at this point, let's move on to several more complicated problems where you might have to actually multiply by multiple expressions in the different denominators. So let's take a look at that. Here's one where we have two different denominators. So let me make some room for this and rewrite it. We have minus 2 over x minus 3. Actually, let me make some more space. And for these, just because we're going to be multiplying each side by two expressions now. So this will equal x over x minus 6. And we need to get these x's out of the denominator. So what you can do is multiply each side by each of the denominators. So for instance, if we multiply each side by x minus 3, on the left-hand side, they will cancel each other out and you get negative 2. On the right-hand side, you'll still have this x minus 6. So we could also multiply everything by x minus 6. And so essentially, we can do this in one step rather than two. But honestly, until you feel very comfortable with it, you might want to do this one step at a time. But once you feel good about it, then you could just get rid of both denominators in one step. And so on the left, the x minus threes will cancel each other out. We'll get x minus six times by what's left here, this negative two. And on the right side, the x minus 6 will cancel out. And you get x here times x minus 3. And we'll just need to distribute the negative 2 to this and the x to that. And so on the left-hand side, we get minus 2x plus 12. And on the right, we get x squared minus 3x. So we have a quadratic. Let's set this side equal to 0. So we can add 2x to each side and subtract 12. And when we do that, we get 0 is x squared minus x minus 12. And this will be factorable. Now, most of these are set up so that the factoring works. But if you're not sure, you can always use the quadratic formula. And for these, since the coefficient on x squared is 1, you can use the grouping method to factor this. But if you just think it through in terms of the reverse of the distribution property or the reverse of the FOIL method, then you know these first two terms in each of these binomial expressions will be x and x since their coefficient on x squared is just 1. So they both have to be x. And then these numbers are going to multiply to give us our constant term, this negative 12. So we need to figure out 
which numbers multiply to negative 12, but these numbers, whatever the pairs are, they're also going to add up to the coefficient on x, which in this case is negative 1. So the numbers that multiply to negative 12, we could have minus 1 and 12, minus 12 and 1. We could do minus 2 and 6, minus 6 and 2, or minus 3 and 4, or we can do minus 4 and 3. But remember, they have to add up to negative 1, and that would be minus 4 and 3. So x minus 4 and x plus 3 will be the factored form of this. And at this point, you could check it by remultiplying everything out. And we can use our zero product property. So x is 4 here, but negative 3 here. Now, you want to be careful because we didn't show which x values cannot be solutions. So you can usually do that either at the end or it's probably better habit to do it in the beginning. But you can see that x can't be 3 here, or else you get division by 0. And x can't be 6 there. So neither of those were our solutions. And at this point, we can plug these back in. So I encourage you pause the video, double check that these are the right answers. But we can assume they are. And go to our multiple choice here. So 4 and negative 3 should be the solutions here, though 4 is not listed. And even though 4 is not listed as a solution here, it is actually a solution. They just don't have it. Since if you plug it in, you get minus 2 over 1 is equal to 4 over minus 2. And so you get minus 2 is minus 2, which is true. But like I said, they just don't list it here. And that's okay. Sometimes they will not list both solutions.